Hiya, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today I have got here two cards that we're going to be doing. These are kind of just a simple card in that it's just printing the image onto the card stock. I've actually, as I say, got two here and we're going to cut them in half, score them and then colour them and that's it and we're going to keep it nice and simple and we're going to be using our distress markers. Okay, so first of all, let me just show you the images. They're really fun. Now, I took the sentiment and retyped it so that I could fit it where I wanted it to go. Um, and these come as digital stamps, and I'll put all the details of them across on my blog post that goes with this video. So, as I say, the first thing we need to do is cut these in half. Okay, so that's those two cut so now we're gonna score them and that looks great okay so let's start with this one here so I'm gonna open it out just okay so I've got my palette here my watercolor palette and I'm just gonna turn it over and use the back and then I'm gonna just scribble on that with my marker and use my paintbrush just to pick up that ink so I'll just pop that here for a minute so you can see what I mean when I do it so we're gonna start off with their skin and I'm going to use tattered rose I thought that's quite a pretty colour now this isn't watercolour paper so I need to be cautious with the amount of water I'm putting on but it's just so we can get a little bit of um, just definition in the colour and difference in the colour okay so which end is it? this end so just going to scribble on here like this and then we can use my paintbrush I'm going to take off quite a lot of the water as I say I don't want masses on there and this is just um, a Ranger Perfect Pearls brush actually and then I'm going to pick up the ink on the brush and we're going to just then go across to here just paint that in and that gives us the opportunity to be slightly darker so we get a little bit more depth of colour on one side so that would give us sort of the shading that we need. As I say, you can see it's not watercolour paper so we just need to be quick and don't overwork it because otherwise the paper will get ruined. And then a little bit down here on his arm. And what I need to be careful as well is that the ink is just normal ink and even though it's been drying for ages you could still move that colour around with the water so just want to be a little cautious with that as well okay so we need to put a hint of colour behind here for his eye skin just behind there so that's all his skin done so now we need to do her and then it, by going gradually just using that same colour over to the other side that gives us that stronger colour on one side so we've got our shading and she's just got her hands okay and then a very again just a light amount of the colour of her skin just coming through her glasses a little bit and then I just want to put a little bit of, this is sponge sugar, just onto her cheeks to give her a little blush. Okay, so now we're going to do her hair and we're going to use weathered wood, which will give us a sort of bluey tone, kind of a blue rinse feel going on there. And what I'm trying to do here is just put in sort of darker and lighter areas so that it's not all one colour there we go I think that's more than enough and then for him I've got a uh, pumice stone and I think that will work quite well for his hair and also we've got a moustache there as well and the same thing just sort of dabbling it on and then on his moustache here I want it darker over the one side just to give that sort of shading there we go so that's him done and then I think I want to just 
add a little bit of the grey very lightly to her glasses here just to make them look like they've got some sort of glass in them and the same with him. What I want to do is the cards and so I've got here faded jeans so let's see and we've got that other one there that we did just now the uh, weathered wood and I thought we might be able to combine that a little bit so I'm going to start off with putting the weathered wood down just down one side just so it's a bit more faded and then I'm going to go in onto this side with our faded jeans and there's really not much need for the weathered wood on those ones because these are clearly a lot of the card is behind there we go so that's those done and I've got here wild honey so I'm just doing the first half of them until my colour just and then I can soften that out and then And I think now I want to just go back in and add a little bit more distinction on her hair with the withered wood. Now it's dry, we can just add a few bits where it's got the curls in the artist drawing there. So I think what we're going to do next is the furniture and the cushion there. So I've got forest moss here. So then just around by him obviously would be darker. So let's just put that bit in first and then just go back in, that was a bit wet, and just finish that off there. And then just going back again, just adding a little bit more definition to that shadow. There we go. And then I think it'd be nice to add a little bit more of a brighter green. So I'm going to use, this is peel paint, which seems a strange colour for a green. But anyway, and then I'll just add that on top just to lift that just a little. Because it's quite a dull green. And then we'll go over our patch as well. So it brings that all together. The other green, I mean, was a bit more dull. So this just lifts it all. And yet we've still got our shading underneath, which I think works really nicely. There we go. So that's got our shading all in there, and I think that looks good. So I think that we're going to do her chair similar because she's got like a cushion, so she's going to have the peeled paint as the main part really of her colour. So because they'd have sort of matching furniture. So then, while my brush is a little bit drier, I'm going to pick up the colour even more intense. And I'm going to put a little bit of that um, forest moss on there as well just to darken that so that we've got some shading going on here. There we go. And again with him I'm going to go back on his hair and just add a little more definition now that that's dried. I think for Stella we're going to go for a nice purple so I'm going to go for Dusty Concord so I'm going to just put a sort of a light coat of that on sort of quite watery compared and then we'll go back and add the definition now you could do her a different colour sort of skirt area but I'm going to do it all the same like she's wearing a dress So we're just following the theme where it's darker down this side, so our light's kind of coming that direction. And now we're going to go back with this and just paint in the shadowing there. And that's pretty much it, I would say. Maybe a little bit round here. But otherwise, that's not too bad. 
and then lastly his t-shirt so we've got some stripes there peeled paint and nice yellow so let's do mustard seed so just taking that from that shaded area across so it gets lighter and then a little bit on the sleeve there and I'm going to go back and put some more colour on the thing and no more water and then just intensify this colour around here to really get that shading coming through so that I think looks really cool I think that's just lifted that picture up nicely and then we just need to come back and put that peeled paint around his neckline here and then lastly we want to just put a little bit of something on the table there so to make it table coloured so I've got here vintage photo and I think that will just do the trick for that and then as you go further down you can see it just lightens off and then we just put a little bit of definition here under our coins and that is that one done I just want to add a little bit of glossy accents to their glasses okay so I've got my glossy accents so I'm just going to pop some on their glasses here and I just thought I really want to give him like a, a pink end to his nose like he's got a bit sunburnt so I'm just using my sponge sugar here and just adding that to the centre of his nose to give him a bit of a sunburn okay so that's that one we'll just pop that to one side and let the glossy accents dry and then we will start the next one while that's up doing it okay so here we are with our second image so we're going to do direct to paper this time with our markers so I'm starting with the tattered rose and using that on her skin so just very lightly nice and simple coloring in her skin and then I just want to add some sponge sugar on her cheeks just while it's still a bit damp and it will kind of blend in nicely and then I'm just going to go down her arms here. I'm not going to do her legs, I don't think. Oh, she's going to have some stockings on. Okay, so that's her skin done. Now we're going to do her hair. And again, I'm going to use the weathered wood. I think that was a really nice one for her blue rinse. Just really simple. And then I just want to add like a little bit of faded jeans just to and what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on a tiny tiny bit and then I'm going over it with the other pen immediately and that just blends that through and gives a nice little bit of definition and then through here and just taking the other marker and this just adds a lot of nice depth to our image and it's not difficult to do you don't have to be fussy with it or anything and then just near her head where it would be darker that's where you want them most of that color and then obviously underneath here and then again just under here just to bring that shadowing through there we go and I think that just gives a nice look to that and then I've got picket fence here and I'm just going to use that just to soften some of that colour out even more okay so now we're going to do her little hat so we've got here festive berries so we're just going to do the main kind of section there and then actually I've done it the wrong way around I've got fired brick that should have gone in there first that's what I meant to put there to give it the depth and then we take our festive berries and just blend that forward and again that just gives a small amount of definition 
then just going back in make sure that shading is nice and defined and then again taking my um, picket fence here I'm just going to use that for this hat because you need to just add a little something to that and if it's not enough you could just add a little bit of your weathered wood in the bits that would be much darker so on the bubble you might want to do a few little dots so it's, and then just then go back in with your weathered wood and just soften that down a bit more so now I want to do her sofa thing so I'm going to start with I've got forest moss and peeled paint so I'm going to start with my forest moss for my shaded areas so around that cushion there underneath there and then there's some little kind of um, folds in the sofa at the, the chair at the bottom there and then going back in with my other colour and going over the top of the first one and by going over the top because it's not like your markers that you normally use they don't blend in the same way so just by going over the top it does just soften the first colour down so you can still see your shading that's the sofa thing there so we now need to do her cushion and I think that and her little throw thing over the side of the cushion at the chair so I think that we'll go for a paler green so shabby shutters so I'm just going to use this green to create the darker shading on its own so it's just keeping that colour and then I'm just going to take the peeled paint and then go back with our shabby shutters over the same area that we just darkened with our other marker so that's the cushion's done okay so now for her rug or throw I think she's gone festive for that so let's do a nice red rug and then we'll leave the white bits like snow so I'm going to use my fired brick and I'm using that on the bits that would be darker and then I'm just going to go in now with festive berries just over the top what I've done already trying to make sure I avoid the little circles because we want those to be white and then we'll want to go back again and just go over where the shading would be just to bring that up a bit more here you go I think that looks quite effective and then I'm just going to go back in with fired brick again just adding that definition to the shading here so I think the other thing we want to do is her cup and I think that that also would be festive so we're going to just give it a nice red stripe and a red handle like that and then we're just going to take my picket fence and just create a little bit of shading so I think that looks good so also I think what we want to do is add some eyeshadow for her. She's not going to be subtle with her makeup, is she? I can just tell. So we've done a really nice blue eyeshadow there. Okay, so I accidentally didn't film me doing her top. So I just used Dusty Concord for the darker area. And I literally just went in under her arms here at the back of her and all just here. And then... I then went over the top with my shaded lilac and I think that looks really nice and then I did a little bit more of the shaded lilac around the areas that were already dark and very little at the front there and at the sort of top point of that shoulder of the sleeve and that gives us a really even more shading in a very simple way. So I think what we'll do for her stockings is we'll use the shaded lilac or maybe the blue, the tumbled glass. So I'm going to go over the top with my shaded lilac and actually I think that will create a nice effect. Yeah, I think that looks quite good actually. And then I'm thinking we need to add something to our blanket here. So I'm thinking I'd like to add is our tumbled glass on these it's quite, still quite Christmassy with the blue and the red. Okay, I think that looks better. 
And then we need to do her slippers. I think she would have pink slippers. So let's use our worn lipstick. So I'm just using that for the stripe and the bottom part of our slipper there, just so that it gives the shading again. And then we're gonna use sponge sugar for the rest. So now we're gonna be working on the tree and the bauble down here. I think it could be a gold bauble. That would work really well. So we put the wild honey near the dark part there and then and then I'm going to put even more I'm going to put the actually I'm going to use spiced marmalade at the back end there and then I'm going to get mustard seed okay so now what we want to do is our actual tree so I've got here pine needles and then mode lawn. I think I'm going to do the baubles first actually because I think it might be easier to go round them when they're coloured. So I'm going to do the stars first in gold and I have actually got some crystal drops by Nouveau tonic. So we've got, so we've got spice marmalade and mustard seed here just for our stars. And then I'm just doing half of the star in the spice marmalade and then half in the mustard seed. Okay, so that's that. And then we've got like little red berries here. And I'm using the thin end, not the, I'm using the pen end as it were, rather than the brush marker in just to fill these in because that's going to be a lot easier to do that because it's tiny little berries. So the little baubles I'm going to put the crystal drops on so I'm not going to bother colouring those so we're now going to just go straight on to our tree. So say we've got for that mode lawn and pine needles so I'm going to start with my pine needles and we're just going to create some of the darker areas. Now we can't do the whole tree I don't think in one go. So you see where the artist has drawn in sort of uh, the layers of the tree you just put underneath that with your darker colour because obviously that would create a shading. So would like the baubles so you go underneath anything like that. And now I'm not going to go any further I'm going to get in with my next marker colour so that it doesn't dry before I have put the ink on top so then I've got a little bit of chance of blending that out Now you can see how because it is still able to be blended you lose some of that definition so you will want to go back and just go over those areas again to create that shading even more. You can see it's a pretty simple colour just, and you can do it even more simple than this if you wanted to it would really work even if you didn't do all the, the extra blending and shading if you just wanted to do it even more but sort of simply you could easily do that and I think it would still look really great okay so that's that done and then I'm going back with my pine needles and just adding a little bit more of that shading so you can see it's just because you kind of blend it out if you, um, so it's nice just to add that definition back in again okay and then back again with mode lawn just to soften that 
that we've just put in again but I'm not going across the whole lot I'm just going across what we've just added and just past the edge so you're going on it and past it just a little bit and that then just helps blend that into the colour that's already there and then I want to just go down the inside of our tree here just to add a little bit more depth on the one side of the tree where it would be shaded a little bit so you can just see that inside now and I think that now brings that all together really really well the last thing we want to do before we put the drops on and the um, glossy accents is just to create some sort of flooring so we've got bundled sage here and I'm literally just doing a very light flick along like so okay I think that looks good okay so that is all of the colouring part done so now we want to go in with our crystal drops so I've got a different a number of different colours and I've also got some stickles um, just to add some pretty sparkle to our tree so I've got some green the blue and these are just so pretty with the little crystal on the top and these are Nouveau by Tonic so we're just going to add a little bit of this to the different baubles so obviously we need to start with a, a good red one here forget you can add your own um, you know if there's not enough little baubles on there just add another over the top of the green there we go just a little splatter there where it burped <laughs> okay and then I think let's go with the nice blue to bring that colour in just do one of that colour I'm going to see you know how I go with all the other colours so then we've got the lavender we've got one down there which I hadn't noticed green so we'll put that one down there And the beauty of these is they settle to a completely perfect little blob as opposed to some which sort of settle with a, a bit of a sort of peak to them where you've pulled up. So I think that's really good fun. And then we've got this nice pink. I think I want to put that here. those done and I think they look fabulous and just turn it to the side you see I won't leave them too long because I don't want them to roll so that's those and then I'm just going to add the glossy accents to her glasses does just make a really nice finish to them and then I'm going to add it to the mug as well not quite so much a little thinner just so it gives that mug a glossy look no I'll add the glossy accents to the berries because I'm going to add glitter to the other items so just make those stand out a bit more give them some dimension like so I think that looks good and then we'll add this Stickles glitter glue. It's crystal, but it's got like a gold to it. So then we'll just add a little bit of that to this bauble here. And then onto our little stars as well. And that will just make that look so pretty. There we 
go. So that's that one done and I think that's come out really well. I love those little crystal drops on there. I think that's worked really well. Okay, so that is our two cards for today. And as you can see, it was a nice, simple colour and you could have made it even simpler. On our first card, we used the markers with um, like a watercolour. Um, even though this isn't watercolour cardstock, it, as long as you're careful and you don't overdo it, that's fine. And also be aware of the lines that they might move. But I think that's turned out, that's got a quite a nice softness, kind of muted look to it. And a lot of the colours I used here were the same as in here, like her hair. That was the same colour um, that I used. Yes, I did add a little bit of the faded jeans just around the bottom um, on this one, on her hair just to give that extra bit of definition in the shading but essentially a lot of these like and the greens of her chair was the same green as here and you can see it's much more muted on this one so uh, it just depends on the look that you're wanting to go for I think this would work this one would work a lot better if I'd done it on watercolor paper because I could have really got going with the painting a lot more and this one obviously we colored direct to paper and you can see you get a much richer look and I think it turns out really nicely with these little um, crystal nouveau crystal drops on there as well and I love I don't know if you can catch how they're just so rounded and I love that that they go on and they make a little bead and you could put those onto your glass mat and let them set and then create your own little pearls really to put in the corners if you didn't want and you can put glitter on them and so there's lots of options with that so the sentiment does come with the digi stamp I did as I said I retyped it for this one because I needed it to go around my image so it kind of fitted on the card but I think that it's a really fun kind of set I really love these and if you want the information about you know exactly what they are the markers etc then do across, go across to the blog post that goes with this video because I'll have all the details there I'll have photographs of the markers I've used so if you're not quite sure on the video if you didn't quite catch it or anything that it'll all be there for you okay so thank you so much for watching um I will see you again soon bye for now bye